Hello everyone, it's me, Postmodern Cowboy, and we're here today, it's been, uh, it's been about a month since I did uh, my last stream, it was just before Christmas, I think, so just, just over a month now, and we're back with something new, this is a real-time tactics game from Eugen Studios, Eugen is a French developer, uh, makers of Ruse, makers of Wargame, Wargame Airland Battle, and Wargame Red Dragon, which is... Uh, Red Dragon's on my Steam Most Played list, for sure. I think I have like uh, 800 or 1,000 hours in Red Dragon. A lot of time in multiplayer. Uh, and this is the company's new offering. This is War No, or Warning Order. Uh, we're going to call it War No, because, uh, I mean, isn't that just the spirit of the age? But it is a Cold War real-time tactics game. Uh, it pits the United States military against the Soviet military. Um, at the height of the Cold War, I believe the year is 1989. Uh, so I think Reagan is uh, the president <laughs> in Warno. But this is a really cool game, um, Reagan notwithstanding. There's not much to offer yet uh, with respect to gameplay. This is a, a what do you call it, early access game, uh, as is the trend these days. I, I honestly think they just wanted to get it to, to market before you know Russia and Ukraine actually start shooting at each other. Um, it certainly is on, on topic for this to be released at this time. And there's a couple of the games in the genre coming out. One called Broken Arrow from a Russian studio. Looks more like World in Conflict from the like early aughts. Uh, it's got a more platoon-based vibe, uh, platoon level vibe rather. And it is, um, you know, a similar, I'd, I'd call it like a war game clone almost. Uh, but it, this, this definitely looks better. Um, and there's another one from Microprose, I don't remember what it's called offhand, but they're behind the curve. Like, why would you bet against Eugen Studios, the companies that have been doing this for, what, like, 15 years now? Um, uh, maybe maybe 10 years, don't quote me on that. But but they've been around for a while in this genre, and, I, you know, Warno proved to not go anywhere anytime soon. Um, so I'm level 2. I haven't done much. Uh, today we're just going to run through uh, some of what the game has to offer via menus. We'll talk about the game uh, conceptually. Uh, some of the stuff in the armory, and then um, I'm going to do a second separate episode uh, where I'll play a single player match versus the AI. Uh, not super exciting stuff. I'm, I'm going to stream some multiplayer in the future. Uh, between this game, Warno, and uh, forthcoming Nebulous Fleet Command, which is another real time tactics space game for those of you who like the Expanse, stuff like that, that's going to dominate the bulk of my winter streaming. I think maybe we'll go back a little bit to Empyrean. Uh, but this, uh, provided it gets updates, is is going to be what I'm what I'm playing. It, it does need some updates because it is it is feature light. I think I wrote in my Steam review. Anyhow, uh, let's talk gameplay first. So there is a tutorial, uh, not out yet. There is a campaign, uh, not out yet. Uh, there's a skirmish mode. You can go into skirmish mode. Uh, operations. I'm not quite sure what those are. I think that's more like a an advanced campaign, but maybe. I'm not sure how it works. I know that in Wargame Red Dragon there were like little chess pieces that you moved around on a macro map of the, the countries um, involved. And it was uh, South South Korea, North Korea. It was the Second Korean War was the premise of Wargame Red Dragon. Um, but yeah, uh, it is it is a, it, it's a reforger game, right? So there's been some talk in the gaming community of like Arma for uh, potentially being. Uh, spin-off of Arma Reforger, which has kind of been confirmed by Bohemia Interactive. Uh, Reforger is this uh, campaign plan for fighting a Soviet invasion of Western Europe through Central Germany. So that's that's primarily where uh, this game takes place. Now, you're not playing as the West Germans in the game. You're playing as uh, the Americans or NATO versus uh, East Germany. I think that the plans are there to add more factions. Uh, and look at this, folks. There's a mod center. So look, one of the biggest complaints I had about Wargame Red Dragon was good concept, uh, limited limited replayability. You know, you can play as Poland or Czechoslovakia, uh, the United States, so many times before you get sick of the factions. What I really wanted, and what I really want, hint hint if you're a mod maker, uh, I want an Arab-Israeli war mod for uh, Warno. I, I think that would be awesome to play through, uh, you know, with the Battle of China farm, um, the Golan Heights uh, fight from, uh, uh, don't quote me on that, but I think that was the Seven Days War. Uh, really, really interesting. Oh, Yom Kippur War? Yom Kippur War, I think. And anyway, don't quote me on this. Uh, I'd, have to, I'd have to check my 
my notes. But yeah, I think the Arab Israeli Wars would be a fascinating uh, backdrop for this. I know the mechanics are in to create some like Vietnam War content. Um, you know, infantry de de debarking from helicopters at, at different objective points and mass infantry rushes. Uh, good jungle fighting mechanics. I, I think I think this game really has that to offer. And of course, we can do a heckin' Star War too. Uh, that's cool. Like, you know, you could have stormtroopers running around with hover tanks and stuff. ATATs to shoot at the battlefield. Um, it's all possible within the confines of the engine. I don't know how tow cables would work offhand, but it, for the most part, the mechanics are there uh, for any kind of contemporary futuristic conflict. Um, so I'm excited to see what modders come up with. This this will be one to watch for sure. And again, that offering from Microprose, Broken Arrow from that Russian studio, uh, that, that actually I think grew out of the war game community themselves. Uh, they don't have this integrated mod support, and, and Eugen's been very direct, saying they want to support community content creators, uh, they want to give people the opportunity to like fight out the battles they would like to fight out. Um, and I'm sure some of them are going to be cringe too, I know one of the more recent mods, uh, not mods rather, one of the more recent updates, in fact I think the most recent update for Wargame Red Dragon was the addition of the South African Defense Forces. Now, you know, I'm an anti-racist activist. I. Uh, have unnuanced opinions on the uh, apartheid South African government, what that stood for, what that represented. Um, South African Defense Forces and like all the like Bush War Rhodesian nostalgia that, that goes along with that inclusion uh, definitely open the floor to like cringe uh, content, cringe community members. Um, on that note, let's talk about multiplayer for a second. Uh, okay, so see, the uh, game name is Trump, right? The further top game. Uh, Word War, War Game has a reputation uh, as a having a fashy community. Don't let that deter you. Please don't let that deter you because we actually need good lefties playing this, um, and not just tankies. You know, I think I think tankies have no problem with the game where you, which you can play as the Soviets and invade Western Europe. But uh, yeah, let's uh, let's talk maybe for a second if I can find it here about War Chat. Is War Chat active? So, WarChat has a bad reputation, too. WarChat is uncensored, or at least was. I don't think Eugen has any plans to change that. Um, you think of all the nastiest things people might want to say to each other at war, and then actually say them in an online chat room, that's what WarChat is like. So, uh, if you want a pro tip, if you want to play war game, uh, not subject yourself to... I mean, you can't really get around the, the political game names and stuff. Um, you know, we get Zukov over here, uh, has people in a game, too. Uh, but what do we do here? We go to... Nope, nope. Change channel. And I believe... Oh, they only have one channel right now. So there, there used to be, because Eugen is a French company, there used to be French War Chat. And the joke with French War Chat is nobody uses it. Nobody ever comments anything in French War Chat. Uh, so in order to avoid the uh, abusive, racist, sexist, just atrocious content that was being said in War Chat. Uh, people would join War Chat French. Uh, it looks like right now there's only one War No channel, and nobody's talking in it right now. So uh, I don't know. Anyway, that's all I got to say about multiplayer right now. It's not. It's not something I'm going to showcase in this in this episode. But uh, certainly in uh, future uh, future episodes, I, I plan to dive into multiplayer and. It's, it really is where the game shines. It's like, you know, fighting the AI only has so much uh, utility, so much longevity for a play experience. Um, when you incorporate other people and they're like devious ass strategies, uh, it, it becomes a lot more fun. So we're gonna talk about the game itself now. It's a real-time tactics game. Uh, you're commanding, uh, I believe up to like a, almost a division strength. Uh, not, not simultaneously, I think you only ever get like a battalion out at once. Uh, you have a lot of troops at your disposal, um, and, and they're in a lot of different categories. Um, it's hard. It's it's hard to figure out where to start because this is some, just an overwhelming interface. Um, even as a seasoned war game player, when I opened this up, I was like, "Well, options. Oh, what are all these buttons? Like, what do these mean? Filter by role. Like, but you have you have different types of units for different jobs." Um, it might be helpful if I could pull up like a map here and show you, but uh, I'll just I'll just talk through um, what the different units do, and, and we'll go from there. Um, decks, decks are a way to 
organize your chosen units. Right now, there's only one deck type that can be built. That's the armored deck. Uh, normally, there's infantry decks, support decks that have either artillery or logistics, uh, airborne decks, air force decks. Um, and there were navy decks in War Game Red Dragon, although I, I, I just don't get the feeling that they're going to feature too prominently in this. Um, maybe boats will come in future because there's like Baltic states and they can fight and I, I don't know, that was cool too. But for right now it's, it's very much just an air land battle game, which was the name of a game from Eugen, was air land battle. Um, they took European Escalation, which was just a, a, a land ground focused game, uh, introduced aircraft, uh, added various NATO militaries, uh, Canada got added in air land battle, um, and, and, and that was uh, an update to the uh, war game model now or no is just it, it's like it's a better war game better physics better graphics better gameplay um, i like everything about it uh, we're going to talk about command units so how does this work these are what these are not command units i'm not sure what i'm looking at here to be honest did it filter out okay there we go there's all the possible no nope. No, uh, filter by... Oh, so you filter out all those. See, that's not intuitive, Eugen. That's not intuitive. All right, command units. Uh, you know, these are units that can take a whole territory. When you move them into an objective, it's like a, a box defined on the terrain. Uh, they capture the box, which produces points for your team, allowing you to purchase new units. Uh, it's not really an economy model. It's more like a terrain control model that... Uh, affirms your uh, ability to move troops to the front line, kind of like models of back end logistics based on front line success. Um, command units, BMP, BRDM, engineers, I'm, I'm not going to go through all of these, but some of these are pretty cool, right? You command helicopters, that, that completely transforms the way you play. Um, they can fly in and out of objectives, take uh, sort of objectives deep uh, in the field, uh, or they may be under, under guarded. Um, I have to turn off all of these two to just limit this to <laughs> command type units. Uh, okay, that's so weird. So there actually aren't that many command type units. Um, we got light vehicles, uh, armored vehicles. There are command tanks, which I, I have because I've, we're only limited to armored decks right now. I have a strong preference for using command tanks. Um, in this case, it's the American M1 Abrams. And you can see on the right here that, like, this is a statistics card that you might expect from a very complicated tabletop war game. You know, something like uh, Warhammer or, you know, it's it's got... Uh, perhaps you can't see it around my, my floating head there. At least some of the weapon damage stats down here are going to be blocked out. But that that's fine. Um, you know... Armor penetration of the machine gun versus armor penetration of the tank gun. These, these things are modeled. They've got a very precise range on ground targets, very precise range on air targets. Uh, there's a uh, smaller machine gun mount at the top of the tank there, the, the M240 Bravo, um, that you know can also engage air and ground targets. So when these things get engaging, each of these weapons can independently engage um, the enemy. So like the main gun may be shooting at another tank, the machine gun might be shooting at a, at a helicopter, and, and the light machine gun or the, the medium machine gun may, may be engaging uh, the general purpose machine gun, I should say, uh, would be engaging infantry nearby. So like, you got these these fine folks here, this is infantry, infantry units uh, can garrison in buildings, they're almost invisible in forest, um, and they do have some integrated anti-tank capability. You know, not not too good in the case of this uh, mechanized rifles leader squad. Um, they're armed with a you know an M72 law. That, that's so. If we compare the 13 armor penetration from the law to the 17 front armor on the Abrams, uh, just by way of example, you know these are on the same side. Uh, but the mechanized rifles uh, leader squad is just not going to be able to go toe to toe with the Abrams at any point. Even if they're in a building, if the Abrams pulls up on them with its front armor oriented properly, uh, they're not going to get a kill. They could potentially get a kill uh, to the side, uh, and they're very likely to get a kill to the rear or the top of the vehicle, uh, provided they're within range and they're a log gunner gets the shot. And, and the unit, you know, it doesn't come from any unit. 
unit has a dedicated, I think there is only one in this game. So there is this guy here has the law on his back. And if he gets killed, they lose the law capability. Um, unlike games like Men of War, Company of Heroes, I don't think you can give the, uh, a bit, the command for another unit to pick up the law. I don't think it changes hands. I think when it's when that guy's taken out, he's taken out. Although it may be that special weapons are also just the last units to be killed because the game does sort of model that system too. Um, by comparison, the Russians have the 20 penetration RPG-22. Uh, this is the Mokostrelki uh, command unit, and and they're gonna they're gonna be able to take an Abrams toe to toe. Uh, at uh, 530 meters, uh, about half a kilometer. Now, that's not a high degree of accuracy. Um, they're, they're definitely going to we're gonna miss uh, a lot of their shots. And, and there's different types of weapon damage too. So HE, high explosive damage, will damage soft vehicles and infantry more so than it will an armored vehicle. Uh, it does need uh, an AP value, I believe. Uh, let me check. I go back to the, and you can't see all of these things. No, no, so it, the armor penetration is the AP value. Okay, um, good good to know. That's, that's me learning something now. Um, but we'll compare the Abrams and the T-80. So toe-to-toe, -to -toe, the Abrams has less penetration than the T-80. Uh, probably has thicker armor, but no, very similar armor. In fact, the T-80 all rounds is better, just slightly thinner rear armor. I guess that's fairly realistic. And they've also got a Cobra. This is, uh, where, where is it on the model? I don't see it, but uh, these Saklos missiles are, uh, I think, wire guided, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, and that'll get a kill for sure. Uh, I just don't see it on the model, which is weird. If anyone knows where the missile comes out of on the model, I'd, I'd like to know. Um, this one has a reflex missile. Again, no visible launcher. I think if I bring up the what the BMP, the BMP, I see the BMP has a very clear missile model uh, for the Maliotka, uh, which is also a Saklos missile. But I, I don't know. Um, this is this is me showing maybe my. Uh, you know, lack of complete knowledge about these things, but uh, uh, yeah, these are command units anyway. So we'll go now to supply units. Uh, supply units, uh, as the name implies, deliver fuel and ammunition to vehicles. And, and, and yeah, as vehicles drive around, they will use fuel and ammunition. So you gotta like, uh, infantry engaged will uh, spend their you know, two or three anti-tank shots and then they'll need a re-up. So you want to bring a truck to them, a supply helicopter. I, you know, this is a UH-60, but normally there are heavier supply helicopters like CH-53s um, in war game Red Dragon, MI-8s certainly on the Soviet side. Those aren't in game yet. I imagine they're coming, or, or will be modded in short order because people are going to want those to play. Um, it's also armored logistics vehicles uh, in this case. Uh, I also believe, I may be incorrect, but I also believe that this uh, M113 and this MTLB are supposed to be amphibious, although again, I don't know if, if amphibious vehicles have been implemented at all. Um, actually, I don't think the MTLB is amphibious. The M113 with its aluminum hull was designed to be, um, not every model is. so. I don't, I don't know if there's supposed to be a snorkel or something, but uh, certainly amphibious logistics vehicles were a thing of war games past uh, for river crossings and stuff. And then there's the, the Hammett, you know, your heavy heavy logistics. Uh, so a lot of supply from this guy, but very expensive. You would you'd have only like uh, four or six in a deck. Okay, moving on to uh, the infantry. And we're just going to tick on all the infantry because there's just so many uh, different types. Um, Actually, there aren't that many different types now, are there? No, there aren't. Okay. So, the engineers, uh, they have the satchel and demolition charges. I haven't successfully used the satchel and demolition charge in single player or in multiplayer in this. Uh, that's a new addition 
I don't know how they work. I guess it's an integrated anti tank capability. I'm not even sure what it does. It just says it's a grenade, so I guess they throw it? Um, grenades are pretty new, I think. Very new, in fact. Uh, as a, as a, these guys have a flash, which is kind of like a theoretical a incendiary rocket launcher. Um, again, no armor penetration on that. And these folks have a dragon, uh, which is supposed to be a high-powered uh, anti-tank, but isn't going to pierce the front armor of an Abrams or a T-80. Uh, might get a front kill on a T-64. Uh, but does have a lot of range, so a, a kilometer and a half uh, make it shoot from within cover uh, and probably get a kill, especially if uh, there's a few units shooting dragons. Uh, they've got six missiles, so yeah, two units could fire 12 times uh, in pretty quick succession. That's that's cool. Uh, I'll keep that in mind. Motostrelki, uh, the difference with the Motostrelki BMP versus the Motostrelki is their support vehicle. Uh, which isn't modeled here behind them, um, but uh, Moto Strelke... Hmm. Oh, I see. I can filter by double click. Okay, good enough. Uh, Moto Strelke and a BMP are going to arrive in an armored vehicle, uh, where these ones are going to arrive in a BMP 60, or I think a truck. You can actually move them in a truck. And you know, they're what they got an RPK, they got an RPG, which has. But I'm, I'm noticing a trend here with the Soviet stuff. It's uh, substantially more powerful. Um, that's going to get a front kill in an Abrams uh, with 30 penetration. I think Eugen might want to revisit um, the 7VR uh, penetration. You know, there are there are different warhead types, um, but well, I guess I guess that one that is that is an anti-tank warhead. I don't know. Um, Neat. I'm going to keep that in mind, too. Motostrelki are good versus vehicles. Uh, and this one actually has less penetration, even though it's a dedicated, uh, I think, sh shoulder-launched uh, Methus uh, wire-guided missile, which is supposed to be, like, uh, a real armor killer. I, I don't know why the RPG is more powerful. That's, eh, this is early access. I think these values are subject to change. It's right, right in the disclaimer when you buy the game. These are sappers. They've got, so just like the engineers, demo charges. And then this is uh, the incendiary alternative for the Russians. Uh, Russians don't have a Spetsnaz unit right now. There's no airborne, uh, at least not in the infantry cards. There might be in the recon cards. Um, but the Americans have aero rifles. Which I'm, I'm, again, I think that may be a mistranslation from the French to uh, airborne. Um, but, you know, it's a rifle squad that flies. Uh, and, and like I said, the mechanic is there uh, to use these kinds of uh, troops in a Vietnam-style scenario, which would be really cool. Really cool, uh, let me tell you. Uh, mechanized rifles, Rifle Bradley, um, you know, we've got more anti-tank. And, and then these guys, these guys have caused some consternation in the game community. The military police. Now, I don't know what the M67 RCL is. I think it's just a recoilless rifle, kind of like a what super bazooka. I think you'd, you'd call it. Um, doesn't have a lot of penetration, but they do have AP, and they're cheap. These guys are heckin' cheap. They show up in little jeeps and, and, and trucks, um, and so military police actually are some of the most effective units in the game. Dollars to donuts uh, for taking and holding ground. Um, the Russians don't have a, an alternative to them at this time. I think. The alternative will probably be like a, like a people's militia or something, uh, as exists in War Game. There, there weren't actually NPs in War Game uh, Red Dragon. I, I don't remember the other two War Games, but these are a new addition. Um, and there's already been some consternation about their like capabilities versus cost. Um, that's all I'll say about that. Support equipment. Uh, right now, there's only one mortar in the game. It's the American uh, mortar M113 that. Uh, these are these are pretty cool. Uh, you can get a couple of them. I, I think like I've had six in a squad at a time, um, and they can fire smoke shells. They'll, they'll put a lot of fire down range. This is a this is a good unit uh, to include. Uh, conversely, artillery. The Russians actually have two artillery pieces currently, and the Americans have one. Uh, this is more like a BMP with a big long range cannon. And uh, this is a slightly heavier version, maybe more analogous to the American M109. 
Um, yeah, Mono Knight is definitely the uh, the king of the battlefield, the highest cost, I think, at 190. Yeah. Um, so the Russian artillery is a little cheaper, a little more plentiful. And the American artillery is quite powerful and is going to get kills at 2.3 HE. Um, it's going to get kills on even like armor targets. If this hits a tank from the top a couple times, uh, it, you're you're going to lose the vehicle, whatever gets hit. Uh, all right, and then there's MLRSs. Russians have one, Americans have two. I'm not, you know, I guess there's a cluster. I'm not sure. I'm not sure on the difference here, to be honest. This is, I guess, breaks down to anti-infantry or no, this would be anti anti-armor. Um, I'm not quite sure why they did it this way. But it's an anti-armor uh, versus a general purpose multiple launch rocket system. We've got our, our, our old favorite, the Grad. Uh, love the BM-21 Grad. These are uh, these are just, just good, solid support uh, launchers that will saturate an area with rockets um, from quite a distance with the range on this thing, 17 kilometers. So yeah, that's, that's a, it's a good vehicle. And the Americans are shooting at 42 kilometers. The maps are pretty big, admittedly. There's, there's aircraft, the maps are pretty big. Um, so what we got now, we're on to infantry fighting vehicles, BMPs, Bradley. Bradley's got the beautiful tow launcher with still less penetration than the RPG. I'm just flabbergasted. And in the tank category, you know, you got all your your favorites, and by all your favorites, I mean there's no T-72s, uh, there's no T... I guess the T-90 is not out yet, it's 89. It's just T-80s and Abrams right now. So more tanks will be coming. Uh, I want to see T-55s, I want to see Pattons, I want to see all of those uh, cool Cold War vehicles that, that got excluded from this first pass. Um, you know, the tank does what the tank does. Reconnaissance. I think there's slightly more variety right now in recon units. This may be uh, the majority of what we're going to get. We've got like helicopter recon, uh, BRDMs. I love these guys, little scout cars. The Americans don't really have an analogy to the BRDM. I guess it would be like a Humvee or something, um, but it's not. It's just not quite the same. Uh, and then there's uh, infantry who are capable of deploying trucks. Um, and BMPs. This is a BMP mounted recon infantry for the Russians. Um, again, I think the ball caps are a little overstated. These, I believe, are placeholder assets for a time when uh, there are more uh, unique infantry models uh, in the game. The recon M113s. These have limited utility, to be honest. Like, this one's got a toe on it. Uh, this one has a, the super, super bazooka type thing. And the only real use for Recon M113 is either as a throwaway scout to send up a road when you're worried it might get shot by light vehicles, or as just a, like a fixed position to hold a front line. Um, these are not something you want to do fire in advance with or try to. Uh, again, equipped with rocket launchers, they, they would make a good like kind of hide in the forest. Uh, although they, you know, at the bottom here it says, and you can't see it behind my fat head, but it says they have mediocre stealth. So they're not even good at hiding in forest. I don't know. I, I literally never buy these. Um, the only other advantage, I guess, is as tracked vehicles. They're going to move at the same speed as any other tracked vehicle, uh, roughly, so that that allows them to keep like unit cohesion with tanks better. But um, the one I just selected, the Bradley also can keep unit cohesion with tanks and it's a recon vehicle so like i don't know m113s are what scouts are scouts scouts do scouty things uh so there are spetsnaz uh one type of uh russian airborne um they don't actually have the blue stripies on models currently i think that's you know again it's all placeholders uh, but they're armed with the VSS Ventores. Uh, that's cool. Uh, AS valves, just some machine guns, uh, and a fairly good penetration uh, rocket launcher. So these are just good scouts with exceptional stealth uh, and good line of sight. Um, they're also decent in buildings holding uh, out against tanks. This could easily kill uh, neighbors uh, from the front if they're buildings. And they're they are recon units, so like. 
I'm going to fly these behind enemy lines, land them with a helicopter. And the Americans have what? Uh, an anti-tank recon helicopter. These are all fairly new uh, developments in war game too. Like recon helicopters weren't armed before, uh, at least the majority of them weren't. So it'll be interesting to see how this balances out. And now we're on to, uh, let's do statics first. Uh, oh, these are anti oh, not statics, anti-tank, transport. Uh, oh, see, there is an MI-8. Yeah, okay, that's transport helicopter, but not a supply helicopter. Um, these are all the vehicles that can move your troops around. Trucks and, you know, stuff like that. Uh, go to AA next has uh, a good mix because they're all in the same category. This is a weird... So Eugen also changed how things are categorized. Now you see like these would normally be with infantry, uh, but they're classed with AA now because they're anti-air infantry, even though they're technically infantry Eugen. Um, less intuitive maybe than they thought it might be. The Americans only have one missile AA right now. Uh, they did have the Patriot missile system at this time. I imagine that will be included in future updates. Um, the Chaparral uh, really likes Vietnam era, weird anti-air launcher. Uh, you know, compared to the Russian uh, KUB or the Tunguska, uh, there's just not really a com comparison. Um, these are vastly superior AA platforms. The Russians have so much AA. Uh, this one fires like Strela, uh, shoulder-fired missile types. This one has just like six really big missiles. Um, the, F, the F-15 Eagle is air-to-air, -air, so it's included with AA. Um, the Americans do have a superior ground defense. Uh, this, the Vulcan cannon, is good against multiple target types. First, it'll kill light vehicles with its one penetration. Uh, it's definitely going to kill infantry real easy. Uh, and it can, uh, it can shoot down air targets, too. This will make quick work of a helicopter uh, or... Uh, even like a low-flying aircraft on a, a slow pass or clumsy pass. Um, you got your MIGs, the other MIG. Uh, this one's this one's a really specialized aircraft that fires uh, these radar-guided uh, anti-air missiles um, at 12-kilometer range. So that's I guess this is analogous to like the Phoenix missile uh, the American aircraft might have. Um, or, yeah, maybe just the, uh, just the Sidewinder, the Intermediate, the Sparrow, Sparrow Missile. Maybe this is analogous to the Sparrow, somewhere between the Sparrow and the Phoenix. Um, this is a little helicopter with some Stingers. Uh, it's kind of a last ditch. And then we got Stinger Infantry, the, the Mujahideen classic um, Stinger. Yeah, uh, good times, good times. Look out, MI-24s. Although, I'm not even sure the Stinger can... Oh, yeah, I can. It will engage your helicopter uh, at two kilometers. Okay, that's, that's your AA. Uh, what do we got here? I don't know what the category is. Suppression of enemy air defense. The Wild Weasel uh, uses these Shrike anti-radar missiles. So, AA vehicles produce a radar field. Uh, these missiles will seek and destroy that radar field. I didn't even know that this was in the game, but I guess they needed something. There's, there's a lot of uh, SEAD uh, aircraft types in the Cold War. That uh, was a big part of uh, the strategy at the time was to, to find and fix and destroy uh, both artillery radar and uh, regular aircraft radar. Uh, but this right now is the only aircraft, uh, the F-4, uh, again, classic Vietnam War aircraft uh, hinting at future Vietnam War stuff. Can't wait. I can't wait. And then we're just going to get to the regular, like the, the uh, attack aircraft, Cobras, Apaches. There's, I think, a couple different types of Apache helicopter in the game. Uh, F-111, the Ardvar, classic strategic bomber uh, style aircraft. It's not really a tactical bomber, is it? It's very, very large capacity. Um... F-4 Phantoms, again, that, that Vietnam experience. Uh, the Mi-24, just the weirdest looking helicopter. Um, your SUs, and for some reason they put down here, I guess this is uh, support. It's not specialized in a specific type of combat. The UAZ with an HES-17. Um, this is a grenade launcher, an automatic grenade launcher. It's, uh, 
unique uh, vehicle and very cheap, very cheap. I think you have 20 points. This is so like, maybe this is the Russian answer to the military police because this, this will just blick you into the infantry and uh, it doesn't have any penetration uh, at all. Uh, so yeah, it's really just an anti-infantry vehicle. And last but not least, I think we're into, uh, what are these? Uh, Anti-tank vehicles. So you got your A-10 Thunderbolt, um, the, the Tank Buster. And a Tow Cobra. Oh, yeah, okay, cool. That's our first guy. Eight, eight Tow Missiles with 20 penetration. That's very good against the tank. Uh, the Apache with its Hellfire missiles that still have less armor penetration than an RPG. Um, the RDM, Concours, uh, again, really useful small vehicle. Uh, it's considered to have bad stealth, mediocre optics, but just cheap, I think. Cheap and plentiful, and yeah, 30 points with 10 missiles, uh, five at a time. This will get armor kills, for sure. Um, at the cost of the crew's lives. Wild Weasel's back again. This is a, an anti... Oh, I guess it is anti-tank, technically. Um, ITVs, I don't tend to use these. Again, M113 variants. They're really just useful for static defense uh, lines. And then the SU-25 with its uh, anti-armor uh, missile payload. I believe that's it. Was there anything else here? Uh, no, we've already been through transport. So yeah, that's 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 how it works. And I'm going to talk real, real quickly about battle groups. Uh, I created a deck, uh, U.S. Uh, U.S. Army, 1990. And so what you do is you, you pick units from this column. Uh, and you put them into these categories. Uh, so, for example, these mechanized infantry rifles, if I take them out, uh, cost three points uh, from my total of 50 points for activation. So, when I add that unit back, I stack points on the deck, and the deck has a limited number of points. Um, that's, that's a balancing measure, it prevents you from overloading decks with like powerful units, but you still get like a good range. Like, I've got a uh, number of Abrams tanks in this deck, uh, all Abrams tanks in this deck, in fact, uh, some artillery, reconnaissance, you get all the categories, a little light on the helicopter side, a little light on the air power side, but this is an armored deck. That's, you know, right now we're, we're limited to the armored deck for the uh, present moment uh, during early access. You can also, you can change things like uh, experience, unit experience. So I'm gonna take away this first Abrams tank uh, and when I put them back in, so if I click on the least experienced, which is they're just trained with a normal chance to hit, uh, I get three of those tanks. But if I pick the most experienced, which is elite, uh, the chance to hit is 50% uh, higher, they're 50% more resistant to stress. These guys have been through some shit. We've only got one tank. So you can create a deck that's a mixture of uh, sort of like low, medium, and high veterans units, and I guess there's also a conscript rating. Uh, yeah, poor experience. Um, just shove the rifle in their hand. Let's go, comrade. Uh, and and that, will, that will create some diversity in terms of, like, knowing which units have which capabilities, uh, which of your units has the veterancy necessary to, to achieve a given objective or uh, follow through on an order not run away in a panic, and, and units will run away in a panic, but uh, yeah, this is really, really, you know, all there is to it. Uh, deck building is something of an art, something of a science. Uh, there's a numbers game, and then there's like a, your play style, knowing what you want to do, what, what's fun to you, um, and balancing that all out. Uh, I've spent a lot of time in the deck builders in uh, these games, and... I, I think that as more decks open up and more options open up, there's also going to be like a, an exchange in a deck and strategy on the forums. I know that Wargame Red Dragon had um, like a, a text string you could generate that would allow you to share your deck with another player. Uh, and so that hashed uh, key would 
allow somebody else to play with your deck. Um, meaning that players who play together on the same side frequently, I think there's up to four versus four right now, uh, can develop uh, really complicated interrelated and interconnected strategies um, that are mutually supportive uh, and enhance their multi-role joint capabilities. Um, okay, that's enough jargon for me right now. Um, I'm gonna do I'm gonna do a, a little playthrough here in a bit, but for right now, uh, that was war game. Uh, rather, <laughs> that was war no. Uh, warning order uh, from Eugen Systems, and yeah, uh, if you like what you see, uh, let me know down in the comments, like and subscribe as always, uh, keep following for future videos and updates, uh, or we'll get better at this over time, uh, that's all for me for now, it's been Postmodern Cowboy, peace.